Hey everyone, how's it going? Thanks so much for tuning in. Today's video has been a long time coming. For those of you who are somewhat new to the channel, I've had this 1989 Nissan 240SX for a lot of years. I want to say almost about, about eight years now, maybe. It's crazy to think about. I've been building the car off and on over the years, just kind of learning my way through the process because it's a pretty intense build, especially for my knowledge base when I first started the car. So uh, yeah, it's I've been through a lot with that car and I've learned a lot, but unfortunately with that learning process, you know, just with how the build was going and whatnot, I didn't want that car to be my learning car, so to speak. I had other vehicles <laughs> that I could do that with that I felt more comfortable with. So um, again, just as I've gone through it over the years, you know, I've learned, I've undone and redone and made significant strides with the build, but of course, it's still not finished. And it's been a long time since I've made any content on it. I think actually the last video that I did on it was doing the paintless dent repair, and that was a year ago this past January. So it's been almost, well, by the time this video go out, goes out, maybe a year and a half. It's insane. I don't understand where the time has gone. I really don't. And I don't really have a great excuse as to why the car is not finished other than I didn't want it to get finished in the time frame that I was originally going to try to get it finished, if that makes sense. There's been a lot of stuff going on in the background, personally and with the channel and whatnot. I shed a lot of light on that in my recent hour and a half long update video on our 62 GMC build um, that I put up not too long ago with my, with my friend Andy. So um, the car was supposed to be finished last year. It was supposed to go to SEMA last year. And just with how things transpired, it did not happen. And for what it's worth, I'm glad it didn't happen because now I'll be able to make sure that the car is done to, you know, uh, properly like the, the how i really dreamed of doing it way back when so long story short i am moving towards completion now and this video kicks that off i know i've said that multiple times now and i appreciate those of you who have stuck around with the channel long enough to <laughs> to hear me say that multiple times but anyway um me and my buddy Andy are going to be tag teaming this car to get it done as soon as possible. I'm putting aside pretty much all project stuff, unless I have like a detailing video or a little maintenance video that I do. No major build videos unless it's 240 stuff because let's face it, it's, it's, it's time. In this video, I'm going to be tackling the biggest bits of custom fabrication that I've been wanting to do to this car for quite some time, and that's to give it a wide body setup. I didn't want to do anything fiberglass or bonded or riveted or anything like that. I actually found these metal flares online. They're semi-universal, I guess you can say. Um, they're designed to fit the curves of this car's fenders and quarters, but there's some universal properties to them as well, so you can kind of position them and move them for whatever setup configuration that you're going for. So I've never installed something like this before, so it's gonna be kind of a learning process for me as well. So please give me a little bit of grace there, but it's gonna be an interesting process, definitely a learning process, and it's just gonna look really cool at the end of the day. But it's also not totally all about looks. Doing the wide body will also allow me to fix a couple of things with the car that I've just never really been thrilled with. So it all stems from my wheel and tire setup. When I first ordered everything years ago, um, I thought I had ordered just the right spec to give me the widest setup possible with using the stock body and I was a little too wide. Um, I've got TE37 SLs, 17 by nines all the way around with a plus 12 offset. Along with sticking out too far, which I really didn't like, of course they rubbed, especially the quarters. So I had everything rolled. The downside with that is whoever rolled the quarters 
ruin the quarters. They cut the quarters a little bit like the pinch weld underneath, which completely took the structural integrity out of the quarters um, and just ruined the wheel arch. It's just, it was just a mess. Um, so I've been wanting to rectify that over all these years and it took me this long to finally get enough courage to do it. So I'm going to fix all of that. The fitment is going to be spot on by the time I get done. It's going to be a more aggressive look and I'll be able to give the quarters their structural integrity back. It should be very, very strong and solid. I'm really looking forward to it. Of course, before I started shooting this video, I had to do a little bit of testing to make sure I had some kind of game plan before I just start drilling and cutting and filming. So I went ahead and test fitted the driver's side and really liked how it came out. So now I'm gonna walk you guys through getting everything test fitted on the passenger side, and then we'll move on to the next step. I'm not sure if any of you picked up on this little detail or not, but the rear flares are actually wider than the front. A good bit wider, actually. I knew they were wider when I first test fitted them to the car a long time ago, like just holding them up there, but I thought I could massage them in a way to make them match the front, but I can't, they're too aggressive. It's almost like they were designed for a staggered wheel setup, which is fine. The only downside is that of course, it would be nice to have legit staggered wheels that were wider at the back, but at this point in the build, I can't and will not spend thousands of dollars in another wheel and tire setup. I love these, and TE37SLs have been discontinued for several years now, so my solution is a very high-quality set of hub-centric spacers, one inch on either side. This, after doing all the maths and stuff, makes it perfectly, or makes the rear wheel fitment identical to the front and where the outer uh, flare lip, you know, lines up with the tire. Like it's, it's, it's what I was going for, long story short. So not only is the car gonna look more aggressive just having the wider stance, but having an even wider stance at the back 
because basically we have a two inch wider rear track now. It's just sick. <laughs> it's awesome. The clips that I was showing you guys at the beginning uh, after I test fitted on the driver's side were uh, after I installed that spacer on the back and oh my gosh, it's just gonna look amazing. So let me go ahead and wrap up the passenger side. You guys can get an idea of what the car is gonna look like after everything is done. And then we'll get to doing some cutting and welding.
I decided to tackle the quarters before the fenders just because I knew the corners were gonna fight me so much more because of all of the extra structural stuff I was gonna have to do because unlike the fenders, the quarters are comprised of outer and inner sections. And all of that needed to be cut out just in the process of attaching the flare. So I needed to come up with a way of joining the factory outer and inner portions to make sure everything was structurally sound before that flare gets attached. So I plated everything in, boxed it all in. It's all very, very strong. Now I can put on the flare and you know get everything buttoned up, at least to the point where Andy can come in and start doing body work. For the sake of filming and the ease of figuring things out, I'm only filming one side, so I've already done the opposite side. Now that both rear flares are fully attached and ready for final bodywork, I'm going to go ahead and tackle the fenders.
Well, everyone, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. All in all, I think the flares turned out really good. I'm not a professional body man, so kind of working with the knowledge that I have, I'm really proud of how it came out. At least it's at a really good starting point for my friend Andy to come in and start doing his finessing and final body work as we move towards paint. That's honestly one thing I'm really looking forward to because, you know, not just because I want to see the car finished, but I haven't really gotten a whole lot of experience with paint and body work, just some high level type stuff. So I'm looking forward to getting my hands dirty throughout the rest of this series and, you know, bringing you guys the videos and, uh, you know, as we work towards completing the car. But anyway, I also know that, uh, you know, probably looks a little bit weird with the flares without the rest of the ground effects kit on. If you want to look at, you know, some of the older 240 videos, you'll see kind of my, my vision for the car. I've got a complete OEM Nissan 180SX Type X kit. So I'm basically doing like a full JDM conversion without actually, you know, changing the orientation of the, of the dashboard. Um, so anyway, instead of me rambling on anymore, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to leave a like down below because it does really help the videos a lot. And if you haven't subscribed already, of course, definitely do that. Make sure you turn your notifications on because there will be more 240 content coming out in the very near future. I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.